Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and I thought I would sit down and do a video for you guys and gals. Well, let me get a sip of my water first. And my beautiful radio voice going and let's talk about this. Hold on, we got those veins going. Okay, let's get into the video. All right, I stumbled across a couple days ago, wasn't even aware that last month there was a meta-analysis released on cold water immersion. Okay. The jury is in cold water immersion reduces muscle growth. Now, people are saying, but it's only after training. Yeah, but it still gives you a pretty big window of reducing muscle protein synthesis. And they've suggested a couple of possible different pathways for it. Now, when this comes up, this is something I've been saying for a long time. When this trend first came out, actually when the trend of uh, cold therapy came out, Years ago, even before we jumped into the fully into the ice water thing, what did you guys hear me say? This is effing stupid. Do you know how I know it's stupid? I've had a couple semesters of biology. I should have had more. But the point is, I have passed basic biology courses and basic anatomy and physiology courses. That is literally all you need to know with a basic knowledge of how training works to go. This is stupid, 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 stupid. The very first thing that popped in my head when I saw this was this is going to slow down recovery and it is going to blunt muscle growth. Common sense here, people. If you have a basic education and a most basic fundamental knowledge of the human body, you already know that cold is a problem for recovery from injuries. We are aware of this, right? We all know this. You know, you're not supposed to ice injuries. The only reason you ice an injury is to take swelling down. That is it. You're not supposed to put ice. That is a very, very antiquated idea. It's not what you do. You don't ice injuries. You do it only in the case of when you need to reduce swelling. That also reduces blood flow. And that was my response back then. I'm like, this is dumb. This shouldn't even be done. People are like, well, I needed to recover from exercise because I hurt. Well, why are you training in such a way that you're so beat up that you're hurting that bad? Maybe fix your, maybe you learn how to train. Maybe you should hire a coach. I'm available. I charge $300 a month. This problem will go away. I have never required my lifters to get sore all the time and hurt to squat 600 pounds or 500 pounds. This is not a requirement. It's not a requirement to get big biceps either. Now, people will say, well, what about athletic performance? Okay, fine, but keep in mind Let's say after an athletic event, you're using it to, to recover. You do realize if you were going to get any training response from any of that, you're blunting it, but it is being do, done to reduce pain. There are other ways to reduce pain that don't involve cold therapy or dunking yourself in an ice bath. I mean, again, but again, people have been sold on the hardcore. Oh, I need to be hardcore. It will teach me discipline. Bunch of Navy SEALs told me to do it. Okay. The question I would ask people, is, we need to have people stay in their wheelhouse and understand specifically what you're trying to do. Navy SEALs are great at what they do. So here's my question. If you're going to take your fitness advice from former Navy SEALs or, or Special Forces guys, number one, ask how beat the hell up are they? Sure, their advice is good for longevity. Number two, ask yourself, do you plan on making a profession out of building insurgencies behind enemy lines and taking over other countries? Like, is this, is this your intended goal? And if you say no, then I'm like, why are you being getting your training advice from people who are trained specifically for that job? Everything that they do is geared towards their ability to do those sort of operations. 
How is that going to help you do other stuff in life? Again, these are highly specialized, extremely skilled, usually extremely gifted individuals. Like the average person doesn't even have the aptitude to get, in, to get through those sort of selections. I'm sorry you don't. Let's just be honest. You have to be pretty athletically good, which means you got pretty good genes for it. You have to be pretty smart. And you already have to have probably some ridiculous internal discipline as part of your intrinsic personality to do that stuff. Okay, the average person is not cut out for that. For it. Let's just, again, be realistic here. Average person is not cut out for that. They're just not. So why are you getting your advice there? There are other ways to improve your discipline that are more effective than dunking your, yourself in a silly ice bath. Just stop. Quit trying to be hardcore and say, hey, how can I reach my goals? Like, I would say that with a lot of my lifters when they come to me. I'm like, so your goal, your goal is to, you know, squat 500 pounds, squat 600 pounds, whatever it is, bench 400. Okay. Is that your goal? Is your goal to be hardcore? Like, which you're going to need to pick one. Because we probably can't do both. Do you want to be hardcore, man? Is that your goal? So you can show off, pretend to be Billy Badass. Or do you want to reach your goals? Because as your coach, I'm going to need you to pick. So stop with the nonsense. The same with this. Jumping in a stupid ice bath. Okay, but it's costing you muscle growth. This is what the data now shows. Again, we didn't need studies to tell us this. Basic biology should tell us this. Basic medical knowledge should tell us this. But now that it has been finally studied, everyone can shut up about it. If you do cold water immersion, you are losing some of your muscle growth. That's it, full stop, quit arguing about it. So keep in mind, whatever other benefits that you are getting from it, you need to accept you are losing some of your gains as a result of it. Now, once we can accept that, then people say, well, I, I also needed to recover because I trained so hard and with so much volume. So you're training with so much volume that you're also possibly losing gains, taking your injury rate up, and then you're jumping your, yourself into a cold bath, also furthering reduce your gains, also that you can be more hardcore. I don't think that you actually care about your gains. My response as a coach, if a lifter tells me this is, I don't think you actually want to get big and strong. I don't think you actually really want it. Because if you did, you would make that a priority and not this other silly nonsense. Okay? You want to talk about it and you want to be able to put on an image of being hardcore more than you want the gains. And if that's the case, then just admit that. Admit that that is more important to you than actually reaching your goals. And if, if you're going to keep doing that sort of stuff and you're going to keep jumping in these cold water immersions because all this other influencer who I really love because he's hardcore, man. I'm going to Joe Rogan, man. Look at that, that roundhouse kick that he can do. Dude, that's so badass. I want to be like Joe Rogan, so I'm going to jump in the ice bath. So basically, you're stupid. Or you're a kid who doesn't know any better. Stop doing this silly stuff. Stop jumping on every goofball, silly, hardcore trend. You know what? You get discipline by setting habits. Okay? How about habits? Why don't you set some habits that uh, help you reach your goals? That'd be a good idea. Drop the nonsense, people. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys and gals next time.